Welcome everybody to the Big Mac Pub Show. Little rush to bring us in. Thank you. Ellie's Ellie. Thank you. Thanks, Daddy. Thank you. Good day. I'm just gonna let this go because it's so cool. Rush finishes the concert, right? This is on YouTube that I've got this running. It goes on and on. I mean, the crowd just never ceases at this huge crescendo of applause. And Danny comes in more time. Welcome to the Manufacturing Home Show. Thank you so much to Rush, my favorite band of all time, and my heroes. And thanks to you for joining me today for the Manufacturing Home Show Live. My name is Mike, and let's get right to things. First, we'll thank our sponsor, ManufacturedHomeMart.com, the premier online store for manufactured housing. Uh, I had a wonderful day yesterday. Uh, things are happening and, and, and in motion. As I said yesterday, you know, we'll try to take things in a new direction for, uh, from the webcast perspective, from the website Manufactured Home Mart perspective, and uh, quite a bit of changes. Now, yesterday I was uh, paying homage to Dave Pratt, a local broadcaster, and uh, I was able to actually, yesterday, after I got off the air, I did in fact start listening to the show, and then I actually called into the show, and they put me on, so thanks to the people at DavePrattLive.com and also Dave. Now, he did quickly have me on the air. Now, here's what happened, too. Let me... Let me explain what happened. See, when you call into a radio station, you might know. Not this one right now, by the way. The webcast is closed for calling in for the time being. <laughs> Till I resurrect the phone that I once allowed people to call on. It's black. It rings the T-Mobile jingle. Anybody seen it? <laughs> a little inside joke there for the morning webcast. Uh, so anyway... Anyway, so what I'm trying to do now is, is, is make a change of direction for the webcast. We're going to, um, anyway, oh, I'm sorry, my Dave Pratt, I, I always get lost when I get on the inside track here. There's my, hey baby. Sorry. Another one of the pitfalls of webcasting from home, my wife just walked by in her towel so. I, I got distracted once again. Anyway, let me get back on track. Dave Pratt, I call, literally, I did call into his um, broadcast, and they did put me on, and here's what happened. So I'm waiting on hold, and I'm, I'm listening to the show live, and they're talking, blah, 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 and then they put on a couple other, but I was like making noise, I was coughing, doing all these things, and then the lady who screened the, screens the calls, I hear her pop in she's like oh I promise you're gonna be next because I was making all kinds of noise and making some comments and I didn't know somebody was listening in on me so then I started to chastise her I think her name was Lexi I'm not sure but I started to chast I was playing but I was play chastising I'm like hey man you can hear me I didn't know you could hear me and then as I was doing that of course Dave puts me on so I was at that time I was describing how there was a delay on the, the, the broadcast. And of course there's a delay, everybody has that. And so I, I didn't mean for that. So Dave, pick, Dave picks up right then and there, and then he goes, oh yeah, there's, there's a delay. Start. So I lost valuable seconds with Dave Pratt. I wanted to say a little bit more. I wanted to, uh, well anyway, it still went okay. Basically I, I did the Dave is here, Dave's not here, Dave is, you know, the old Cheech and Chong routine. Dave, Dave's not, okay, anyway. I did that and then I said, you know, congratulations on coming back on the air. I'm a big fan because I first heard of you back, way back in the days, uh, 98 KUPD days, which I didn't name the KUPD for a moment. I stopped to think, should I name that? Is Would Dave be okay? So I sort of paused, but then he did say, oh yeah, all the radio stations were great, KZON, Camel, blah, 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 blah. He named them off, and then I was like, ah, should I screwed that up? And I wanted to name this webcast. I wanted to say, Dave, I've been plugging your show on our webcast, and I wanted to tell them. 
but I didn't get that far because he quickly dismissed me off of the air. I did have enough time to congratulate him and say that I thought that his format is great. And it is. The, like the internet radio and uh, sort of, you know, podcasting. The webcasting, the, the reason I do this, of course, everybody knows, is because this is free. So once again, thanks to Ustream and the great technology that they provide. Now, if I had more money and wanted to invest it, maybe I would, you know, get higher tech and be like a, a real broadcaster. But that's not really necessary right now. <laughs> And by the way, <coughs> I'm still ailing, so give me a break. I, I, I know I look bad, I sound bad. <coughs> I'm doing my best, okay? Anyway, I do promise to go back to the, to the call-in format. When I do find that telephone that I was just describing, I'm going to put it back in, and that'll be part of the show because I think it's it will be uh, very good for us to interact instead of me just talking. But you get some kind of kick out of it. Let me quickly move to the headlines now, if I can find it. And what I was noticing, there were, let me, let me, before I hit the headlines, let me say, as uh, I turned on Ustream today, they had a, re a real broadcast going on. What is that guy's name? Hold on a second. Go to Ustream. Oh, shit. Ah, uh, bear with me. I'm sorry. I clicked on the wrong thing. Bear with me. Ustream's main page. Oh, no, it's gone now. The guy's gone. They were stream Anyway, they were streaming a live broadcast. Other movies came out. There's something All else now. But those guys were good, and uh, I'll plug them as soon, uh, as soon as I can remember who they were. But I, anyway, I was listening to that, and I thought that they were, they were doing really, really good, uh, those guys there. So I... I, I follow them or whatever you do, whatever you call it when you're a member of Ustream. Um, good broadcast. Good job. But, but what I was noticing about what, how they do it is they very quickly, I mean, they barely really touched on the subject matter. I mean, boom, boom, boom. They were going through headlines like quicker than, I, I mean, really quick. And I, and I was thinking like, wow, I mean, did they prepare? What do they do? Now, they still stick on some things, and it seemed like it was, you know, more of a rehearsed or, you know, they were ready to do it. But the other stuff, they would just read off, and then they would might, you know, somebody might make a joke and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, that's probably the way to do it. Maybe I need to be quicker on the draw and just blast through this type of stuff because maybe just you don't care what I have to say. <laughs> All right. So, everybody, of course, the headlines on USA Today, everybody is upset about Pakistan. Now, you can read the article on USA Today, U.S. Tr treads fine line in relationship with Pakistan. The big debate, of course, lately is what did Pakistan know? And we know... If you're asking me, they, they knew a lot, and I, and I mentioned that yesterday in the webcast. Now, here on CNN.com, I'm just going to play this video. Hopefully, it'll be good here. If it's a commercial, I'm going to mute it and talk over it. But this is a... The field's here, about 100 yards away. There's okay. a big crowd of people gathering around there. I can see some soldiers. There's one soldier walking the in compound. across the field. But when you look at this building, look at it there. It's different from all the other buildings around it. It's taller. And it's got a higher wall. The compound starts right here. You can yeah, see. Yeah, this thing sticks out like a sore thumb. Look at this. Okay, I'm six foot. My arm's maybe another two feet. And that gives you an idea of just how tall the wall is. Okay. Of course, there's razor wire at the top of it as well. Uh, uh, all right. We, we don't need to go on and on with the video. Go and check it out yourself on CNN.com. But the point is, I mean, even looking at that video, and many, many, many people are questioning. I, too, of course, as anybody. Uh, I... I happen to think that they definitely knew, so everybody is looking at Pakistan. Like I said yesterday, don't trust them as far as you can throw them. That's it, period. So MSNBC.com, something about Cuba. Cubans face the one time, it's unimaginable that Cubans, are, what, Cubans don't get pink slips? Young Cubans deal with the unimaginable pink slips. What, Cubans never get fired at last? I don't get it. 
I'm not even going to read that article, but there was something other than Bin Laden on the front page. But it, I have to say that this article does share the front of MSNBC with White House staff debates release, release of Bin Laden death photos. That's the other big debate that's going on right now. Um, and, of course, yesterday I said I would like to see him. I noticed there's a lot of people out there that are against that. I know a lot of people, you know, and, and God bless all of you guys. The, you know, the peace-loving people of the world, I think, just want, want to be chilled with this. Not be celebrating people's death and don't show it. And, and a lot of people are concerned about their kids, don't want their kids to see it. And I can understand and appreciate all that. Whether or not we see the photos, actually, when I stop to think about it a little bit more deeply, this is irrelevant. I do believe it. If I never, ever see the photos of Bin Laden dead, I'll still believe it. Just like the USA landed on the moon about three months before I was born. Even though I didn't really see it, and some people still think maybe it didn't really happen, I do believe it. In this case, I'm definitely going to believe the U.S. military, the President of the United States in this case, uh, that they got him. So, once again, salutes all around to our country. We're, we are the best. <laughs> Let's give the golf clap, clap of the day to the United States of America today. How about that? All right, let's move on. And I head towards my local news. And I didn't really glean too much, and of course, I didn't really have too much time. So um, let's go to a random article. Let's try a new. Let's try a, uh, try a new segment called Random Article, and today we'll pull it off of AZ Central. <sighs> let's try to find something interesting. How about one? Fifth graders face paint a bit too much for the school. That's in the buzz. You know, this is going to be an article. I don't even have to read this article. Basically, you're going you're gonna to see somebody who painted their face and then somebody else didn't like it. Yeah, that's it. You know, a lot of times I am amazed at the amount of news, okay, that is just like, you don't, you don't even really need to know it. So that's why I just blow right by it. I'm not even going to start to read it to you. It's so bad. A lot of times I got to I got to I got to say AZ Central, man. Guy's got to step it up. <laughs> anyway, okay. Let's go to some manufactured housing news. And then then we'll be done with this pathetic excuse for a professional webcast. This is from mhmsm.com. Good news source for manufactured housing, everybody. And in this article, it's talking about a guy who he is going into the modular business and he is from the regular stick belt. So this is, this is a transition that hardly ever takes place. Somebody going from the site building business into sort of the factory built business. And let me just read real quick because it's not very long. Um, I don't like that they don't say what the company is, but oh well. Okay. The Seattle Times in Washington State uh, comes word that the head of one of the most, the city's most prominent real estate investment companies has begun a startup to build modular apartments, military housing, motels, and student housing. Dale Sperling, former CEO and president of Unico Properties, which manages 15 million square feet of commercial real estate, is convinced of the need for affordable housing in downtown neighborhoods. He says his children raised his consciousness about recycling and green technology. He realizes that many people in the younger generation are shying away from buying homes because they have seen acquaintances lose equity in real estate. Sperling seized an opportunity to buy a modular business for 15 cents on the dollar. And, and uh, convinced longtime business associate Chuck Collins to join him in the venture. Collins says he has never seen so much zeal in Sperling for any project, adding, I've never seen him so convinced about something as he is about this. So good for Chuck Collins and Mr. Sperling. 
welcome to the manufactured housing world <laughs> and we wish you certainly the best of luck and much much success I would love to know um, the names if anybody could send that to me that would be great or publish it that would be even better but listen uh, let's check out where we're at I don't see anybody on the chat but that's okay um do 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 no well listen I'm out of here. I think we've eclipsed enough time. I can't even say, oh, yeah, we've been going 15 minutes. I hope that was a speedy enough pace for you. The truth is, is that I could, I could go on and on and on, but who really wants to hear that, right? Oh, the wife's firing up the beatbox in the background, so it's time for me to go. But before I do, of course, the last plug goes to manufacturedhomemark.com the premier online store for manufactured housing go there right now because now I am done for the day thank you so much for stopping by have a great day go manufactured housing thank you so much